Shanghai is the jewel in the crown of a decade of Chinese economic growth. It's a slick, outward-looking city. If it was the only place you visited in China, you could easily believe that this country has in always embraced an open, modern outlook. But that's not the case. They know they cannot control totally, so they are trying to slow it down, trying to put uh, uh, more barriers to to get the mass audience to know the truth. Isaac Mao is a young venture capitalist. He invests other people's money in new technologies. It's a high-risk, high-return business. At 36, he's already an old hand. I think I may be one of the earliest bloggers in China because I, I have tried many ways to find some other peers uh, that moment in year 2002. But I didn't find so many of them. Only a few people can be seen as bloggers that moment. By the end of 2002, Chinese bloggers were still in their hundreds, and Isaac Mao knew most of them. But the last six years have seen a massive change. Ah, yes, yeah, it's, it's really a dramatic boom in, in China for the blog sphere because we can say that there are already 60 million bloggers now, and it's impossible that you know every one of them. The Chinese government has responded to this boom in potentially disruptive internet chatter with heavy-handed censorship. I think it's a game like a cat and mouse, you know, because people always trying to be more free freer to access information so around the world. To people of the people. mouse. Yeah, but Play the government's the, the cat. And the government always always want to try, try, try to act as a cat, you know, to control and uh, to limit people's access to the whole world information. But uh, I think the mouse is running faster. Until recently, Chinese people have been denied access to famous websites like YouTube, Flickr and the BBC. In the run-up to the Olympics, they've been given access to certain pages on these sites, but not those revealing information on Tibet or Taiwan. The online encyclopedia, Wikipedia, is usually completely blocked. If you really count the numbers web websites here has been blocked, it's a long list especially those grassroots publishing websites, you know, they are, they are strongly forbidden here. Let's have a look at one of them. What happens if you try and type in Wikipedia? Yeah, you, your um, browser will suddenly get uh, cut off for minutes. You just show a, a, a disrupted connection here. But actually, you know, from a technical perspective, you can know that is someone monitoring the traffic of all your access. Hong Kong is officially part of China, but the former British colony enjoys extra freedoms. When Chinese people visit here from the mainland, they get to see what the internet is really like, because they've crossed what's called the Great Firewall of China. It's blocking websites that are hosted on computers outside of China so that people inside China cannot see them. Rebecca McKinnon is a Hong Kong-based academic who grew up in Beijing. She's one of the leading experts on Chinese internet censorship. 
the way it works is that the internet enters China at about nine points, eight or nine points, and then that enters the national network. And so there are routers uh, that that control access to the international internet, and and through those routers, um, you have a filtering system. So the routers are configured to block certain words, certain kinds of content, uh, certain web addresses, and so on. When she's writing her own blog, Rebecca McKinnon also documents the censoring of material which is generated inside China. And it's actually very rare that somebody gets a knock on the door as a result of something they wrote on a website and a blog. I mean, extremely rare. You can, you can count those cases on, on, you know, a couple of hands practically. There certainly is surveillance. There certainly are internet police, and there certainly are people whose job it is who work in the public security apparatus to to track speech on the internet. But uh, when it when it comes to most internet users, their speech is actually being controlled by private businesses. The companies which host Chinese blogs are held responsible for their contents. So if a taboo subject is mentioned, the hosting company will often send a polite message, suggesting that by changing their words, the blogger can have their article posted. So clearly anything about the Olympics is a little bit anything sensitive. Anything about the Olympics is going to cause the post to get flagged or to get checked. Before it, before it can get published, or anything about the, Olympic, the Olympics has a much higher chance of getting taken down. Multinational companies are also, by their own admission, censoring the internet in China. Google has set up a special Google China, which blocks searches on human rights or Tibetan independence. Yahoo has come in for particular criticism. It helped the Chinese authorities track down a journalist named Xie Tao, who's now been jailed. Under penalty of perjury, that the testimony you are about to give... For this, the company's executives were called before a US congressional committee last year. If you think our witnesses today are uncomfortable sitting in this climate-controlled room, and accounting for their company's spineless and irresponsible actions. Imagine how life is for Shertau, spending 10 long years in a Chinese dungeon for exchanging information publicly. Shertau was a business journalist who thought it was safe to use his Yahoo email account. He sent notes to a foreign pro-democracy group about government orders banning reporting on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. My understanding that failure by the Yahoo China operation in Beijing to comply with these lawful orders. To the Chinese government, this amounted to divulging state secrets. They asked Yahoo for his details and the company passed them on. Civil and criminal penalties, including imprisonment. Why, why do you insist on repeating the phrase lawful orders? These were demands by a police state to make of an American company a co-conspirator in having a freedom-loving Chinese journalist put in prison. I want to take a moment to recognize the family of the dissidents who sit behind me. And I want to say that we're committed to do what we can to secure their freedom. And I want to personally apologize to them for what they and their family are going through. I'm very open to understanding how we can be helpful. I told you how you can be helpful. You can meet their humanitarian needs. Sir, give me a yes or no. Are you going to do it or are you not going to do I'm it? I'm willing to consider that, Mr. Congressman. You're willing to consider it. That's, that's a no by every other standard. Yahoo has now paid Shetau's family an undisclosed amount of money. It sends a message that it's okay to have a certain amount of human collateral damage for the sake of the long-term business success. 
there's really no way you can provide an email service hosted on computers inside China and not end up assisting with the jailing of dissidents. It's almost, I think it's impossible. The jailing of some cyber dissidents has not stopped others from trying to push out the boundaries. Zhang Shehe is a self-educated guerrilla journalist who travels to isolated areas like the villages in northern Shanxi by the crumbling remnants of the Great Wall. In cyberspace he goes by the name Tiger Temple or Lao Hu Miao. He documents the lives of poor rural workers and stays out of major trouble by knowing just how far he can go. <laughs> He's written about the plight of people in Arlotsun before. Now they view him as their champion. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音> What drew Zhang here was the foul-smelling water which first appeared around these farmers' homes a few years ago. <laughs> Villagers have lived here on the outskirts of nowhere because they could get something to drink. Yet despite the winter snow, life still evolves around the precious commodity of water. This Life here is pretty hard, especially in the winter months. It's been made even harder by water pollution. So these villagers are happy that Zhang She He has come along because now somebody has given them a platform to air their grievances. Zhang's blog is full of stories about China's underclass, along with photos and video footage. When people accuse local officials of corruption, he's prepared to report it. Shi Shenghuo was born into a tough landscape. After 70 years living in a sometimes frozen desert, 
You don't complain easily. He wanted us to see the evidence of what he was talking about. When you live a great distance from people of influence, it's easy for your complaints to be lost in the wind. And Shi has a particular reason for his grievances to be heard. Zhang's articles about these Shanxi farmers have not been censored, but he's not always that lucky. In Chinese bloggers speak, when Zhang's writing goes too far, he's been harmonised. This is a play on words, using the Chinese government's catch cry of promoting a harmonious society. Yet he hopes the authorities will see what he's doing in a positive light. Many Chinese internet users trust that if their government is blocking sites, it must have good reasons. Others are using special tools, like a proxy server, to get around the Great Firewall. For Isaac Mao, all this is stifling his country's economy. If you've never been to China, you won't realise that the censorship is everywhere. But to Chinese people, they will face such problems every day. But in China, some things are still more important than the economy. The Chinese government's goal is not to control 100% of what people are doing 100% of the time. The Communist Party, however, does want to remain in power. And so in order to remain in power, they want to prevent certain kinds of conversations and certain kinds of uses of the internet that might lead to people organizing to overthrow the Communist Party. In 1978, Deng Xiaoping said, you open the window and some flies are gonna come in. And that's inevitable. But the main thing is we have to open the window or we're going to die of suffocation. <laughs>